cash costs estimated at a low $600 per ounce. Visit crushthestreet.com slash gold IPO. Hello, everyone, and welcome into crushthestreet.com. I got a special guest for everyone today, a famous legendary investor, Jim Rogers, co-founder of the Quantum Fund, well-renowned speaker, author of multiple books, and you know we're going to get our, our healthy dose today of economic and geopolitical updates with the man himself. Jim Rogers, thanks for joining me. I'm delighted to be here, Kenneth. Jim, uh, today on Zero Hedge, we saw CNN's Greed and Fear Index hitting highs that we haven't seen since 2014. So we're seeing this greed aspect where there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of greed, and investors are getting greedy in the stock market, and the S&P 500 actually hit new high today. What is your thought on this? Well, uh, it, it's the, we're, the world is flooded with an artificial ocean of liquidity, and central banks all over the world cannot stop their printing presses, and in fact, they keep gearing them up. It looks like the Japanese are now going to print even more, the Europeans are going to print even more. This is all absurd. It's all outrageous. It's all going to end very, very badly when it ends. The question is when it's going to end. It should have ended by now. It hasn't. It seems to be getting worse, mm. which, which is good for people who own, that's good for people who own the S&P. It's not going to be good in the end. Mm. Well, you know, sir, uh, you mentioned central banks getting involved here. Uh, where do you suppose these rallies in the markets are coming from? And, you know, I know the Federal Reserve just came out and gave the banks a backdoor bailout, allowing them to buy back their own stock. And, uh, you know, do you suppose it's just going to be more of the same Ponzi scheme uh, regarding these market rallies until the system implodes? Absolutely, Kenneth. If you look at stocks, let's use New York, but New York for the moment, most stocks in, in, in 2015, twice as many stocks were down as up on the New York Stock Exchange, it, but the averages looked okay. So far this year, more stocks are down than up, but if the averages look okay, it's because if there's a lot of money floating around. Most of it's going into a few big stocks, names that people know and will buy at almost any price. But most stocks are going down. And, Kenneth, if you look around the world, most of the big stock exchanges around the world are down over the last year, some of them fairly substantially. So mm. there's a lot of money floating around, but it's not doing very well mm. in returns. You know what, sir? Uh, i got to ask you, who do you suppose is, is going to profit from this current debacle, just this global financial mess? Obviously, we got the Eurozone with the Brexit. And, you know, I, I'll, if I can, I'll bring up George Soros, who tends to be someone who positions himself in ways uh, for, that, uh, for big profits in geopolitical events. And uh, we recently heard about his short positions in the stock market, short bets on Deutsche Bank, along with his long position on gold. And I want to ask you, where do you see the elite money going and how will they profit from this big mess? Well, I, I repeat that most stocks are down and most stock markets are down around the world. Uh, most people are not doing well in their investments unless they happen to own a lot of bonds and this year unless they happen to own gold. But most things are, are down, Kenneth. Uh, I'm not sure who's making the money. Maybe the short sellers are making money uh, in, in the various markets around the world. But unfortunately, people are not getting good returns. Most many hedge funds, as you know, are closing. And there are thousands of hedge funds now. But the returns are not there. You also see that most mutual funds are not doing well. We, we're in a period where most people are not making money, not doing well. Mm. Uh, unless you happen to own the S&P and those few stocks that always go up, or you own bonds and gold. Those are the things that are up this year. Yeah. Well, you know, Deutsche Bank is uh, reminding me a lot of a Lehman Brothers in 2008, and I'm actually hearing that the Deutsche Bank implosion will make Lehman Brothers look like a small bank in Idaho going under. Uh, would you agree with you know what we saw in 2008 in Lehman Brothers and uh, what we're seeing now with Deutsche Bank looking eerily similar? Yes, if Deutsche Bank goes broke, you can forget all the comparisons you've used uh, in the last two, two or three decades. 
in the world, but the Deutsche Bank is the largest bank in Germany. It's a gigantic institution. It has trillions of dollars in derivatives, off-balance sheet derivatives. If that goes, <laughs> you look out the window because you're going to see a gigantic storm coming. Mm. Well, uh, let's shift our focus over to China. We know China is accumulating uh, gold on and off record. And, you know, I'm wondering, do you feel that China is positioned stronger to absorb a massive shock to the fiat currency system than, say, the U.S. and the Eurozone, considering it's gold that it's importing? Well, it does have a, a lot of gold. And it's interesting, if you go to China, and you walk down the street, you'll see a lot of gold shops where people can go in and buy and sell gold if they want to. This is a phenomenon that did not exist 15 years ago. It's only been in the last few years that this has happened. And so the Chinese public has been buying a lot of gold. Um, you can buy Chinese gold coins pretty easily, not pretty, very easily in China. And a lot of people have been buying them. So the Chinese public uh, is position stronger than it ever has been as far well not ever but in the past several decades as far as precious metals are concerned i don't know if the chinese government owns gold or not they they officially announced that they own some gold i don't know how much they own because they don't they don't announce it <laughs> but china is certainly in better position than most countries now you know the west united states is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world most countries in europe have deep debts China has some debts now, certainly much worse than it has been in the past few decades. But China is in much better shape to, to deal with what's coming than most of us. Mm. Well, uh, Mr. Rogers, I'd like to get your closing thoughts here. Bill Gross, the bond king, says investors should be now worried about just getting their money back to them, a return of their money versus a return on their money. And just kind of with those, with that theme in mind, what are your final thoughts here? Well, he's, he's correct about that. Uh, even if you own government bonds, if the governments don't declare bankruptcy and don't default, what they'll do is just print a lot of money. So, you, you know, Russia went bankrupt in the early 90s. All the pensioners got paid, they just got paid in worthless money. So they didn't default, and that's what's likely to happen this time around. You may get your money back, but actually the facts are you're not getting real money back. So he's right. You better worry about the return of your money. Gold and silver is one thing that many people have been using to at least have some assets if it all falls apart, but there may be other assets too. Mm. Well, it really does seem like the bull market is kicking into gear here uh, with gold, seeing what we're seeing in 2016 in U.S. dollars. I know we've seen gold rally pretty large.